The teleporter, a fundamental piece of Quake's design which connects distant parts of the map with a wormhole through space. Bathed in swirling fragmented light, the teleporter tantalizes players with the promise of unveiling otherworldly horrors that await beyond its threshold. What if we could catch a glimpse of the destination before stepping through the teleporter, making a portal? Not only would portals provide awe-inspiring visuals, but would also unlock some mind-bending non-Euclidean set pieces and disorienting puzzles. Having spent some time studying Quake's Edge Rasterizer, I think it's time to put some of that knowledge to the test. Many of the principles I talk about here have analogues in the hardware accelerated realm, which I'll mention as we go along, but I want to focus on how the software engine is adapted. In this context, a portal is a view from one part of the map into another. The portal is created by marking a surface as being a portal and associating it with a portal image, defined by an offset and a rotation relative to the portal itself. To draw what's on the other side of the portal, the scene can be rendered a second time, but with the camera translated and rotated so that the portal's image in the second render appears in the same location as the portal in the first render. This can be done by reversing the portal transformation so that the image lines up with the portal. Of course, this isn't the whole story. Here I've got the code set up to draw the far side whenever part of the portal is visible in the first render. As you can see, the whole scene gets overdrawn with the second render. Hardware implementations deal with this using a stencil buffer, which marks pixels where the portal surface is visible in the first image. The stencil is used as a mask during the second render, so that areas outside of the visible portal area are not redrawn. We could do something similar with the software renderer, but that's not really in the spirit of the original engine. Per pixel testing like this was very expensive on the machines of 1996, so it'd be nice to find a solution that could, at least theoretically, run well on period hardware. The solution I came up with is based on spans and edges, topics that I covered in a previous video. Check it out if you want more details. Briefly, the software renderer partitions the scene into a set of horizontal spans, with each span being linked to a particular polygon in the scene. These spans are produced by working out where each scan line intersects edges visible on that line. The set of intersections for a given scan line is known as an active edge list, or AEL. The AEL is walked from left to right, keeping track of which polygons are between successive pairs of edges. Spans are generated which indicate the polygon that is nearest to the camera at each point. The idea is to render the first view as normal, generating spans for each polygon, including the portal surface. The portal surface is not actually rasterized, but its spans are stored and used as a mask when the second scene is rendered. To do this, the AEL scanning process is modified when rendering the second view. Each span from the portal is converted into a pair of fake edges for the relevant scan line's active edge list. These edges indicate a dummy surface, which appears in front of all other polygons in the scene. This surface is never actually rasterized, which means the original rendering is left untouched and only parts where the portal appeared are drawn in the second render. This works fine in some situations, but in others, the second render can have its view occluded if anything appears between the camera and the portal image, making objects from the second view hover in front of the portal. Hardware implementations can deal with this by creatively positioning the near clipping plane to coincide with the portal's image plane, thus stopping objects from the second render appearing in front of the portal. Unfortunately, the software renderer has no such concept. Instead, we can clip polygons as they're being pushed into the edge rasterizer. The BSP tree could be leveraged to do this more efficiently, although it's 2023, so I'm just testing every polygon right now. Here's what my culling method ends up looking like without the screen space clipping applied, and here's what it looks like with the screen space clipping too. So our single portal scene is looking pretty good, but what happens if a portal is looking at another portal? Or what happens if that portal can see a third portal? Set up a portal looking at itself, and you could have infinite portals. Or each portal might be able to see multiple portals, giving an exponential explosion in portals. I deal with this by maintaining a queue data structure, which gets appended to whenever a portal surface is rendered by one of the other views, and popped whenever a render finishes. Each element of the queue contains information to render the view from a particular portal, so information about how to transform the camera, the portal spans, and so on. Portal views are rendered until the queue is empty, 
or until a fixed number of views have been reached. Visually, this is just about done, but to really sell the effect, we need to be able to move through portals. Thankfully, programmer BMFBR has got this aspect covered with Instance Teleporters, a feature of the Alkaline mod for Quake. This feature allows the player to move between two points, with the relative position and angle being maintained, near seamlessly moving between portals. Now let's talk about limitations. Most notably, non-brush objects such as weapon pickups and torches aren't clipped to the portal, since they don't use the edge rendering path during rasterization, so I simply hide them for now. In addition, the player movement being based on teleport means you have to be careful to match up the geometry on either side of the portal to avoid the player teleporting into a solid. Another issue relates to the BSB splitting algorithm. Right now, you have to be careful to avoid the portal surface being split, otherwise you end up rendering multiple views for each portal. With a split portal that looks at itself, you can quickly exceed the limit on portal renders. All that said, none of these problems are insurmountable, and I'm pretty pleased with the result. It's even conceivable that with some further optimizations, it could run on hardware not too far off original system specs.